bit late, aren't they? It's a do. It's what? A do. You know, they company. Oh, I see. It's a sort of party and they're having high tea. Roast pork, stamp pie, salmon and salad, trifle, two kinds of jellies, lemon cheese tarts, jam tarts, Swiss tarts, sponge cake, walnut cake, chocolate roll and a pound cake kept from last Christmas. Is that all? No. There's white bread, brown bread, currant tea cake, one of them big curd tarts from Gregory's and a lot of cheese. It is a do, isn't it? And a little brown jug. Little brown jug? You know what that is, don't you? No. Don't you? <laughs> well, I never did. A little brown jug's a drop of rum for your tea. They're getting right lively on it. But you don't come from round here, do you? No. <laughs> I come from near Rotherham. My father works in the pit and so does our Frank and our Wilfred. There's a bell ringing somewhere. Oh, I know. Let her wait. She's run me off my legs today. And that Mrs Northrop's in the kitchen. She can do a bit for a change. There's seven of them in the dining room. Alderman Elliwell and Mrs. of course, Councillor Albert Parker and Mrs. Parker, Mr. Herbert Soppet and Mrs. Soppet, and of course, Miss Holmes. Oh, Miss Holmes is there, is she? Yeah, but she stopped eating. You're caught in her, aren't you? What? Oh, I saw you both the other night near Cleckley Woods. I was out myself with our milkman's lad. Oh, don't look like that. I won't tell on you. Now, now, look here. What's your name? Ruby Bertel. Now, look here, Ruby. You wouldn't want Miss Holmes to get into trouble with her aunt now, would you? No, I wouldn't like that. But I wouldn't like that shilling. You said Miss Holmes had finished eating. Yeah, she can't put it away like the rest of them. I'd rather keep Councillor Albert Parker a week than a fortnight. Do you want to see her? Oh, yes, could you quietly give her the tip that I'm in here if uh, the others aren't coming in yet? Oh, not them. You'd think they've been pined for a month the way they're going at it. I'll tell her. But she better come through that way, through Greenhouse. Oh, there you are! <sighs> That's right, Mrs Northrop. I see now right about it. You guessing in here as if you were a place instead of getting on with your work. She's run for you twice already. And I've just taken in another lot of hot water. Now, come on, you little crackpot. Oh. Ancient organists from Chapel. Yes. Oh, oh. Aye, well, they've got it in for you, lad. Well, how do you know? Because I heard them say so. I don't miss much. So that's why Mr. Helliwell asked me to come round and see him. That's right. There are three of them here tonight, you see. All big men at chapel. Been enjoying yourself a bit too much, I fancy, lad. Well, that's it, is it? Aye, yes. Mm. And do you know what I say? No. I say, to hell with them! Nancy! Oh, no, you mustn't. Not here. Now, this is sensible. This is serious. Be sensible. Do you know why they've called for you? Oh, yes, they've got it in for me. I've just been told. It's serious, Gerald. And now, as far as I can gather, one of these miserable old beasts saw you late one night with me. Oh, I say, you weren't recognised, were you? No, but you were. It's not so bad as long as they can't drag you into it. I know how strict your aunt is, and you can't afford to quarrel with her until we're ready to be married. Yes, but you can't either, Gerald. Oh. They're going to be very cross <laughs> with you, and you'll have to be awfully careful what you have to say to them. <laughs> and that dreadful Councillor Parker's here too, and you loathe him, don't you? Absolutely, and I'll loathe him even more when he's full of roast pork and trifle. Better give them time to recover from that huge ghastly tuck in they're having. I should. Though they've nearly finished now. If I clear out for half an hour or so, could you slip away too? I <laughs> might. They don't really want me, you see. It, it's an anniversary celebration and I don't come into it at all. Well, what are they celebrating? Your Argus. This is Miss Holmes, Alderman Elliwell's niece. The oh. others are still having their tea. Right. Evening, Miss Holmes. Henry Omeroy, a photographer. 
pleased to meet you, I'm sure. Delightful weather we're having for the time of year. Isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. I seem to have come too early. I'm afraid you have, yes. Oh, that's a shame. I could have had a couple more with my friend down at the Lion. He's a chap I used to know when he had a very good little peppermint rock business by the uh, Central Pier in Blackpool. Time I had my studio there. Oh, good old damn day. Happy days, Mr. Uh, happy days. Uh, anyway, I don't exactly know what this is all about yet. I, I just got a message from the office to say, come up here and bring me camera. Oh, you see, it's their silver wedding anniversary. Ah, Alderman Helliwell's silver wedding. Very nice, I Yes, suppose. yes, but uh, not just my uncle and aunt's. There's three couples, you see. Oh. My uncle and aunt, Mr and Mrs Soppet, Mr and Mrs Parker. Uh, not Councillor Albert Parker. <laughs> yes, do you know him? I do indeed, yes. Yeah. Every time he opens his mouth down at Town Hall, he puts his foot in it. We call him the foot and mouth disease. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, are all three happy couples here? Yes, because you see, they were all married on the same morning in the same chapel. Ah. They have a photograph of oh, a combined God. wedding group. You'll have to interview them and they'll tell you how happy they've been. <laughs> yeah, I see the here idea now. Oh, yes. All Ooh. six of them on their wedding morning. Don't they look absurd in those clothes? Oh, well, to you, Miss, yes, but, but not to me. You see, I was married myself about the same time. Now, I think what's wanted is another group of the same couples in, in just the same positions as in this old photograph. Hmm. Yes, very nice, that'll be. Very nice. Yes. You're holding it upside down. I know, lad. That's how we always look at a professional. I say... Either the flies have been at this, or someone's touched up Councillor Albert Parker with a screwdriver. <laughs> hey, well, if I'm too early, I'm too early. I suppose I might as well pop back down the line for a bit. <laughs> I'll come back in about an hour. All right, then. Very nice drop of beer they're keeping down the line just now. Yeah, very nice. So this is when they were married. September the 5th, 83. Yes, why? <laughs> what is it, Gerald? <laughs> Gerald, what's the matter? <laughs> oh, stop being so mean, they'll be here in a Quit, they're coming in, Nancy. Let's dodge out that way. Was, was truly splendid, I really have to say. Now, now, you go and sit down there. Now then, uh, what's wanted now is a good cigar, and I've got the very thing. That Mrs Northrop, when she finishes her washing up tonight, she goes and goes for good. Now, I'm quite right too. They're all the same. Answering back if you say anything. Trouble with her is she likes a drop. I've smelt it before today. Now, Albert, you will find that's a fine cigar. La Corona. Thanks, Joe. As you know, I don't smoke a lot, but when I do, I like a good cigar. Oh, that's right, Albert. Uh, Herbert? Oh, no, no, I don't think I will, thank you. Yeah, Herbert, I've wanted your cigars. Aye. If he'd had to pay for it himself, he'd have been wanting one. No, I don't think I want a cigar just now. I believe I ate too much at tea. Oh, right, I know Albert. I did. <laughs> Aye, you'll be complaining before the night's out. And so will Herbert. Now that's something that never bothers me. <laughs> no, we've noticed that, Albert. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, go on, Albert. You know Joe. He must have his little joke. <laughs> I know I ought to have stopped long before I did. At tea, I mean. At Mariah. It was all so nice. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see, I said to Joe, Joe, I said, there'll only be just the six of us, but we'll make it an occasion and do it well while we're at it. Didn't I, Joe? Um, did you? You know very well I did. You know quite well I did, Joe Helliwell. All right, all right, all right, you did then. Oh, dear. They're all alike. Wait till you're with somebody and then try to make your eyes a liar. Speak for yourself! I don't try to make my wife out a liar, do I, Annie? Well, no, Albert, not really. What do you mean, not really? I just don't, that's all. 
Good smoke, Joe. Quite a good smoke. Yeah, they have, they have. Mm. It reminds me of that cigar Sir Harold Watson gave me not oh. so long since at the club. I was standing near the fireplace and Sir Harold, he came up to... Albert, you've told them before. Well, I can tell them again, can't I? Mariah, uh, have you got a copy of that old photograph we had taken? I couldn't mm. find out. Yes, yeah, sir. Oh, 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 where, where is it? Oh, oh, many's the time I laugh when I think of that morning. All six of us, all so nervous. Oh, and that parson weren't still. He was just like two pen of the copper. I could have given a few years myself. <laughs> I think we were about first he'd ever married. I'm sure we were. I didn't feel I'd been married properly. Well, of course you've been married properly. If he'd have been 90 and doing it all his life, you wouldn't have been married any better, would you? I can't remember his name now. It was only a temporary, wasn't it? I remember it was a tree. Um, a beach. Oh, beach. Oh, the beach. Sure. That's right. And he'd a funny squid. <laughs> <He's eating. laughs> and here's that old photograph. Oh, oh, that's mm. right. Oh, and oh. Now, Albert, you know the crossbreds are down again. Oh, yes, 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 I noticed that. Yes, yes. I think they'll stay down with the Australian market as it is. If I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. If Marino's is down and stays down, then crossbreds are to follow. Now, look where Marino's oh, is now. Oh, we didn't come here to talk about Marino's. This isn't wool exchange. Just take a look at yourselves and see what we oh. took on. <laughs> there you are. Hey, wait a minute. Elves. Oh, that's right. Oh, Joe, yes. really? Yes. Oh, we better do it in proper style and drink our else before we go any further. Oh, further? Where? That'll do, Herbert. A bit of fun's all right, but you go too far. No, I didn't mean that to... That'll do. Well, there's a tray with glasses on. Bring what, it in. What? what? Me? How many pairs of hands do you think I've got? And there, just tell the old Aunt Ruby to bring in the port wine. What? On top of your tea? Oh, you'll be poorly. Oh, did you hear that? Oh, now, Joe, leave it. We don't want any trouble, but she goes tonight she does. and she doesn't come back. I don't know what things are coming to. They're all alike, answering back. They're all the same, that class of people. We have same trouble at milk. Don't know when they're well off. Idle, that's what they are. Bold idle. And impudent. Back answers. Yes, but... I suppose they don't know any better. They know a lot better. And what you want to stick up for them for, I can't think. Now, Albert, uh, don't start fratching, but try and enjoy yourself for once. This is an anniversary. Oh, which reminds me, uh, old Charlie Pearson told me the other day they'd built a new Wesleyan Methodist chapel up at uh, Thornton. Aye, and they open with an anniversary. <laughs> well, uh, this is our anniversary, so uh, let's have a bit of peace and goodwill all round. Now, hmm, I thought first of all we'd start with a couple of tours to ourselves. That was my idea. <laughs> uh, and then we'd uh, have a chat about old times and uh, settle down for a nice game of Newmarket. That was my idea too. <laughs> What the hangman does it matter whose idea it was, as long as we get on with it and enjoy ourselves. Aye, that's the great thing. Enjoy ourselves. I told you to leave that salmon alone. <sighs> nay, Clara, why can't you have a bit of salmon if he fancies it? Cos it don't fancy him, Joe Halliwell, that's why. Look at that time we all went to Scarborough. It was bridling to It was both. And what did that doctor say to you? You're digging your grave with your teeth, Mr. Soppet. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, what are you bringing all those bottles in for? You're bringing one at a time. Mrs. Northrop said you'd better have the lot while he was at it. Well, in future, you take your orders from me and not from Mrs. Northrop. Now, pop along and no lip. Mrs. Northrop said she's not coming here again. We know all about it. Oh, Joe, let it be. Oh, hey, do you know what we ought to do for this? We ought to get in the same places as we were in that old photo. Where is it? Right, here it is. Okay, I was in the middle. Uh, and are you this side, Clara? Are you this side? Uh, Albert behind Danny? Yeah, yeah but you take one from Albert, doesn't it? There we are. Clara? Yeah. And Danny? Right. Here we are. <laughs> 
Ears to me. <laughs> and my wife's husband. Oh, <laughs> yo, we don't want any of that silly nonsense. No, no, a few serious words is what's wanted now. Oh, must you, Albert? What do you mean, must I? What's wrong with a few serious words on an occasion like this? Marriage is a serious business. <clears throat> Quite right, Albert. Where'd we be without it? Single. That'll do, Herbert. <clears throat> marriage, well, marriage to begin with, it's um, it's an institution, isn't it? That is so. One of the oldest institutions. It goes back, uh, goes right back to, well, it goes right back. And uh, it's still going strong today. Why? Uh, well, uh, because... Uh, let me finish, Joe, let me finish. Why is it still going strong today? Because it's the backbone of a decent, respectable life. True, Albert, true. Where would women be without marriage? And where'd some of you men be? Oh, I'm coming to that. Oh, well, get on with it, will you? I want to try this port. <laughs> marriage may be a bit more necessary to women than it is yeah. to men. Why? Why? Children, you see, Annie. Oh, uh, yes, I'd forgotten. But still... Now, I'm, I'm talking now, if you please. But if a woman wants security mm. and a respectable home, which she gets from marriage, then a man wants... He wants all he can get. He wants somebody to tell his troubles to when he comes home, and a nice, comfortable home, and uh, so forth. Oh, very good, Albert. Yeah, and so forth. Now, Joe, well, keep it short. So, friends, as we're all gathered today on the anniversary of our joint wedding day friends i give you the toast of marriage very nice albert mm. it'll go straight to my head <laughs> do you remember that time at harrogate i could have sunk through the floor when that waiter laughed <laughs> now wait, wait a minute uh, that's all very well and good but nay damn it Joe! No, we ought to have a toast for ourselves. I bet it isn't often that uh, three couples get together who were all married on the same morning together. <laughs> now then, come on. You have a bit more there. You and don't you... act silly, Herbert. but my face goes all red. All right, are we all ready? Are we all ready? He is. So what's... And to the Reverend Mr. Yeah, what's his name, bitch, who tied us all up wherever he may be. Is to what? Is Is to him. Him. Mm. Oh. A front door? Who'll that be? Oh, well, uh, I told you it's your argus to come round to have a word oh, with oh. us. Oh, are you going to have a piece in the paper? Oh, I don't want to catch us like this. Oh, no. Mm. Oh, come on, how was that? Well? It's Mr. Forbes, the organist from chapel. He oh. came before and then went away again. Oh, tell him to wait. <coughs> <coughs> now then, mm. I'm a bit worried about that chapel organist. <clears throat> yeah, he's chapel organist, he's, he's paid for job and either he behaves himself or he goes. Well, go anyway if I've my way. Right. Oh, no. Albert, he's not a bad young fellow. Now you shut up, Annie. You don't know half of what we know. And I'll bet we don't know half of what there is to know about that chap. He mm. never should have been appointed. I said so then. I say so now. I know my own mind. And I wish sometimes you keep a bit of it to yourself. What's that mean? Oh, no, no. Um, where have you been? Oh, just out a minute. You don't want me, do you, Auntie? Because I was thinking maybe if you don't, that um, I'll put my hat and coat on and go see if Muriel Spencer's in. All right, love. Uh, but now that Gerald Forbes is waiting outside, your uncle has something to say to him, so mind you don't go talking to him. I should think not. Just say uh, hello or um, good evening and leave it like that. The less you have to do with him, the better. <laughs> oh. Now what are you laughing about? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Uncle. I just remembered a 
something that amused me. Now what's got hold of her? Oh, she's at that silly age. They don't know whether to laugh or cry half the time when they're that age. Wow, <laughs> Clara, Annie, we'll leave the gentlemen to it. I expect that's what they want. Oh, yes. Certainly. After all, it's chapel business. Well, we want to go upstairs anyhow. That's you right. haven't seen what Joe bought me yet. <laughs> <laughs> but mind you, don't take too long over him. Him? It wouldn't take me long. <laughs> It'll take me less long because I don't make speeches. <laughs> I said from first it's a bad appointment. To start with, he's too young. I don't think that matters much. Trouble with you, Herbert, is you don't think anything matters much. And that's where you're wrong. <laughs> young Forbes is a southerner. Now I was coming to that. Oh. Huh. No. When they told me he's a southerner and his name's Gerald, I said, we don't want him. I said, la di da that's what you're going to get from him. I said, la di da No, what we want at Lane End, biggest chapel for miles around, we don't have any amount of money in congregation. What we want is a good old bit of Yorkshire organ playing and choir training. We don't want la di da Oh, how do you do? So charmed to make your acquaintance. Oh, delightful with all. You know what I call that? No, bloody dog. <laughs> right, Albert. We made a mistake, but uh, mind you, he had good qualifications and he seemed a nice, quiet lad. But, uh, nay, damn it, he, he wasn't right, was he? No, uh, it's all, uh, la di da. And then look at his <coughs> messiah. We warned him, I said from first. I know it's a Christmas piece, but you've got to get in there quick before the others. You're right, Albert. By 10 of November, there's been so many of them, you might as well take your messiah and throw it in canal. And look what happened. Aye. Wesleyan Baptists gave messiah. Aye. Picklebrook Wesleyans gave messiah. Aye. Salem gave messiah. Aye. Tong Congregational gave messiah. And where was Lane End? But when we did get it, it, it was a good one, I'm not saying it wasn't, but uh, by that time, who cared? Anyway, that's a matter of detail. Point is, we can't have any carrying on. Uh, now there, I agree with you, Joe. Well, I should think so. Organist at Lane and Chapel carrying on. That sort of game may do down south, but it won't do up here. Right, we're agreed on that then. We'll have him in. Come in. Uh, I wouldn't do that. Do what? Well, what have you got in your hand? Of this, a cigarette? Why? Under the circumstances, young man, don't you think it might be better, more, more suitable, more fitting, if you didn't smoke that just now? All right, if that's the way you feel about it. Uh, well, uh, you wanted to talk to me about something? We did. We do. If I had my way, we'd have been talking to you long since. Well, not very long since, as I haven't been up here very long. No, you haven't been up here very long, and I don't think you'll be up here much longer. Here, Albert, let me get a word in. Now, uh, Mr Forbes, you're uh, organist at Lane End Chapel, which is the largest place of worship around here. It's a very respectable neighbourhood uh, with a lot of money behind it. Now, you have a paid appointment as organist and choirmaster. Yes, but it doesn't keep me, you know, Mr Halliwell. No, but because you are our organist, you get pupils and various other jobs, so you don't do so badly out of it, do you? No, I'm quite satisfied for the time being. You're satisfied? For the time being, you're satisfied? That's what I said, Mr Parker. Councillor Parker. Alderman Halliwell. Councillor Parker, Mr. Soppet. Plain mud. Now listen! Now let me finish, Albert. Now then, let's just keep calm. Everyone just have a bit of calm. I'm quite calm. <sighs> You're a bit too damn calm for my liking, young lad. You should be standing there looking as shame for yourself rather than standing there, well, looking as you do. You haven't told me what I've done wrong yet. Wrong? <sighs> 
You're wrong, and carrying on's wrong. Other chapels might not care what you did. I don't know, but uh, here, Lane End is a respectable chapel with a position to keep up. We are respectable folk, and we expect our organists to behave respectably. I think you've been very careless, Mr Forbes, and, and there really has been a lot of grumbling. For one thing, you've been seen out late at night with girls. Girls? It may be same girl for all I know, but... Uh, if, as I hear, is true, oh, she ought to be ashamed of herself. If she had out to do with me, I'd teach her a sharp lesson. Somebody saw you once gallivanting away late at night at Morecambe. Oh. And it gets round, you know. Oh, yes, it gets round. So it would seem. But I didn't think you'd find it worth your while to waste your time listening to a lot of silly gossip. Now, don't start taking that tone. What sort of tone can I take? I say a lot of silly gossip. Now, steady, steady. Silly gossip, old woman. That bottle. will do. Now then, that will do. Now, just... I haven't done anything I'm ashamed of. Well, what's that proof? If a chap's got cheek of a brass monkey, he never needs to out he's ashamed be of. Be careful, Albert. Why should I be careful? I'll tell him to his face what I've said behind his back. He never should have been appointed. And now... <sighs> He's carrying on and not caring tuppence what respectable folk might think. I don't think he ought to be given any warnings, but be told to get back to where he came from. Then he can carry on as much as he likes. Uh, now, Albert, let's not be too hard. Perhaps we should give young men just, uh, just another chance. I would normally, but uh, nay, this is a festive occasion, so let's take it easy, shall we? Uh, now, so I'm going to give you one chance to uh, mend your ways. And you should be glad that uh, you caught me in this sense of humour. Just so happens we're all celebrating our anniversary. Yes, all three of us were married 25 years ago today. Now what are you shaking your head for? Well, I'm very sorry, Mr Helliwell. Oh, I, I beg your pardon, Alderman Helliwell. Ah. I'm very much afraid you've not been married for 25 years. Do you think we can't count, lad? No, I, I don't mean that. I mean you've only been uh, living together all this time. <laughs> living together? Why, I'll knock that head off your shoulders if you speak to me like that, young lad. I, 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 I mean what I say. Mean what you say? You're wrong in your damn head. And, and now steady, Albert. It's a steady, Joe. We must listen. He means it. Means it? Means what? Oh, just be quiet a moment. I'll explain. I don't want to. Quiet. Let him be, Albert. Thank you. Mind if I smoke now? I went to North Wales for my holiday this summer. Oh, is this part of it? Because I don't care where you went away on your holidays. I went to North Wales this summer and only came back a fortnight ago. While I was there, I made the acquaintance of a parson who'd been out in Africa for the last 20 years. When, uh, when he learned that I was the organist of Lane End Chapel, Cleckowick, he became very excited. And it turned out that he'd been at Lane End himself some 25 years ago. What was his name? Beach. Francis Edwin Beach. Oh, yes, from Mr. Beach. We were talking about him earlier, weren't we? He was parson that married us five and twenty years ago. Uh, that's what we celebrated our marriage. Twenty-five year ago. Go on. Go on. Well, I could see something about his time at Lane End Chapel worried him. You might say, gentlemen, it was preying on his mind. It was gnawing at his conscience. It was haunting him. It oh, was... What is this, a recitation? I must apologise, gentlemen, if I'm boring you. la di da la di da If you've got anything to tell us, for God's sake, tell us. Quite don't right. la di da Quite right, Albert, and quite right. Now, um, what did Mr Beach have to say? We didn't say anything. Oh, well then, uh, what are you nattering on about Wait him for? Wait a minute, for? Joe. What? 
That's not all, is it? Oh, I should think not. Only you won't give me a chance. I say he didn't uh, say anything, but he wrote something. Uh, the letter only came a couple of days ago. I have it here. <clears throat> From the Reverend Francis Edwin Beach. Dear Mr. Forbes, before returning to Africa, I feel it both to you and to myself to explain what you must have found puzzling in my many references to Klekowick and Lane End Chapel. Although I was only temporarily at Lane End, I could not forget it. For there I was guilty of the most culpable negligence. I went to Klekowick straight from college, and during these first few months, I did not realise that there were various forms I ought to have signed and had witnessed by the church officers, so that one may be recorded as an authorised person to perform the ceremony of marriage. <laughs> what? Give me that here. <laughs> what? Ceremony of marriage when I was not authorised to do so. Fortunately, I was only called upon on two occasions to marry people, but on the first occasion there were no less than three young hopeful couples who all thought I was joining them together in holy wedlock when in fact I was completely unauthorised to do so. Let's have a look. It's signed all right too. Francis Edwin Beach. And if you compare the signatures, it's the same as the one in the chapel register. No deception. Why, the bloody donkey. If we've never been married at all, then... Oh, I've... well, don't work it out in detail, Herbert, because it gets ugly, it gets very ugly. There's that lad of yours at grammar school, for instance. I wouldn't like to give him a name now, would yeah, you? steady, Joe. No, 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 just, uh, just don't. It gets ugly, it gets ugly. Keep your mind off details. Silver wedding. Oh, now don't you start neither, Albert. Joe, Herbert... When them three poor women upstairs gets to know what they really are. Oh, then Bloom goes up properly. Be all right, Rumpus. You'll be able to hear them from here to Leeds. Joe, Herbert, they mustn't know. Nobody must know. Why, if it word gets round town, we'd be laughed right out of town. What, Alderman Elliwell, <sighs> Councillor... Albert Parker oh. and Herbert Stop it. Oh. All big men at chapel too. Why, if this leaks out, we're done. We are. If once it got into the papers. <laughs> papers? Oh, Christmas. Oh. We've got to keep it from papers. Hadn't you better give me back that letter? Oh, uh, no, no, no. 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 Oh. Here, oh, Albert, here. And there, Joe, give it back. Uh, no, 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 Albert. I don't trust no one with this letter but this up. Why? It's uh, dynamite. But it's addressed to me, so it happens to be my property, you know. <sighs> nah, he's right there, Joe. I'll trust you to put that in. Dang me, you're in this mess just as much as we are. Anyhow, we've got a position to keep, even if you haven't, Herbert. I'm only saying he's right when he says it's his property. We had a case... Oh, the... never mind about that case. What about this case? Is the trunk load full of cases? Uh, my letter, please. <sighs> What's the idea of this? Now, who are you going to give it to if you're not going to give it to me, then? Well, um, I, I, I would like it back. I mean, if you could give it back to Mr. Soppet, uh, oh. who could be answerable to me to it, or you can give it back to me. Oh. Uh, certainly, what's, certainly. What's the idea of this? Oh. It happens to be the way I feel about it. Oh. Mr. Soppet may have the letter. Sir. Maybe we've been a bit hasty. What do you oh. think? Oh, I thought they'll be knocking in a minute and they'll be getting impatient. I expect Clara's been ready to come down for some time. Yeah, they'll be ready to start celebrations again. Well, it was because of Herbert we were hasty, though, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, once he gets started, you were hasty, you can't deny it. Well, what, no, me? Nasty. Yeah, uh, mind now, you. listen, good. Now, listen here, lad. Um, I, I know we were a bit hasty when we first uh, came in, and uh, I know you only want to try and do what's right, but, uh, nay, uh, damn it. Um, sorry. <laughs> Nay, yeah, damn it. Um, yeah, yeah. Sorry. No. Oh, I expect Joe has a nice cigar for you somewhere. Uh, not yet. Oh. Not yet. Now, so you'll do, uh, yes. Now, um, yeah. Would you like a nice cigar? Yes, thank you. Oh. <laughs> 
I'll tell you what, I'll say to your face what I've often said behind your back. You gave us best Messiah <laughs> and best Elijah we've ever had at Laned, and these are very fine cigars as well. Oh, oh easy, easy, best in clickerwack. And, and, and what I tell them I do when they ask me, I said, uh, this young lad of ours is clever, I said, uh, he's on you, he always had it in him, I said. <laughs> you, you did, Joe, and so did I. I've always been on your side. Uh, I, I believe you have, Mr. Solid. I believe you have. It's a good job you're keeping that letter. Aye, uh, I'll look after that letter. I think uh, you should get those cigars uh, you. And maybe a drink as well. We could offer a drink. Hmm? Now then, uh, here we are. Now, you must have a, a cigar or two. Now, you're going to promise, aren't you, not to say anything to anyone about this uh, nasty business. Now, you will promise not to say a word, won't you? All right. Ah, there's a good lad. <laughs> but what are we going to do about the wives, though? We want him to come oh, down soon. It's wives again. Curious thing about wives, they're always telling you what poor company you are for them. And yet they're always wanting to get back to you. <laughs> it's not because they enjoy your company, it's so that they can know what's going on. Well, what is going on? <sighs> this is what's going on. Ah, <sighs> look, we're just in no shape yet to face wives. Oh, they're they're out of us in ten minutes, then fat will be in fire. I don't suppose that Mr Beach could have been mistaken. Could he? Well, we've got to put our thinking caps on. I I'll tell you what, we could take that letter and get expert advice. <sighs> what? And have it all over town? Well, we could put a case without mentioning any names. No, no. I know what we'll do. We'll go down to the club. We can talk it over there in their peace and quiet, can't we? So, right, right down to club. And there, uh, lad, come here. <laughs> now, remember, you promised not to tell us all, didn't you? Yes, you're, you're safe with me. Good. Right, now, right. Uh, come on then, Albert, come Herbert, to straight down to right. club. Right. Now, we're going to go off. You go off in a couple of minutes through front door. And you do promise now, don't right. you? Come yeah, on, you Albert, are. Herbert, Good straight line. down to club. Oh, 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 have you been listening? Listening? I should think I have been listening. Oh. I wouldn't miss this lot, even if it means having an earache for a week. Oh. <laughs> None of them rightly married at all. No, one of them properly tied up. <laughs> okay, careful, you may break that dish. Break a dish? If I want to, I'll break a dozen now. <laughs> Not you, I dare you. Well, here's a start, he knows. <laughs> only gone outside to finish their smokes. When Herbert takes me out to enjoy myself, I don't expect him to be outside finishing any smokes. Perhaps they had something they wanted to talk over. Well, they can talk it over here. Something. Well, Ruby, are they out there? No, they aren't. Well, did you look properly? Well, I couldn't miss three grown men in a garden that size. Well, did you look up and down the road like I told you? Yes, but they aren't there. Well, didn't you hear them go? No, I was back in kitchen all time, doing the washing up. That Mrs Northrop left me to it. Well, where was she then? Out here somewhere, I fancy. I know she's gone like a daffod ever since she come back, laughing to herself like a proper barn pot. Well, go and ask Mrs Northrop if she knows where they went. <sighs> that noise you heard upstairs was some of Mrs Northrop's work. One of my best dish is gone and Ruby said she just laughed. Stop it out of her wages and see if she can get a good laugh out of that. I've no patience with them. I thought she didn't look a nice woman. Well, one of them idle drinking pieces of nothing from back of the mill. I was in a hurry and I had to have somebody but she goes tonight. 
for good. Mrs. Northrop said they wanted to have a nice quiet talk because they went down to their club. Club? Club? And tonight of all nights. I've never heard of such a thing in my life. Club? I'll club in. Nay, I don't know what's come over them. Perhaps I know it... what'll come over one of them. Perhaps there's something up. What can be up? They're just acting stupid, that's all. Ah, well, now, come on, Albert. They're here. Um, I am well, um... Well what? Well, uh, now, really... We, we didn't think you'd be down yet, did, you, did we, Joe? Did we, Albert? Uh, no, we didn't, Herbert. That's right, we didn't. Uh -huh. uh, but stop it. You must be wrong in your head. Club! And tonight of all nights. Oh, well, we thought we'd just nip down for a few minutes while you were talking upstairs. What for? Uh, uh, well, just to talk over one or two things. Aye. Aye. What things? Oh, you know, just uh, just things. The things, um, uh, uh, the things in general. Uh, you know. I see the table's all set. So oh. what about that nice game of Newmarket? Oh, you will I... get no Newmarket out of me tonight. You... You're selfish. I'm surprised at you, Joe Halliwell. And after I planned to make everything so nice. Lot of thanks you'll get from them. Club. Well, go on, say something. I have to just think what day it is. Thinking. After giving you best years of our lives without a word of thanks. Just remember, Joe Elliwell, there were plenty of other men I could have had beside you. What? You seem to think once you've married us, you can take us for granted. Nay, nay, I don't. Yes, you do. All alike. If some of you were to wake up tomorrow and find you weren't married to us, you'd be in for a few big surprises. Uh, uh, um, uh, yes, I dare say you're right. Now, now, Joe, what's got into you tonight? There's no wrong with me, love, no wrong with me at all. You'll hear more about this when I get you home. Yes, Clara. Oh, what were you saying about your cousin, Clara? Well, the doctor said to her, you're all acid, Mrs. Foster, that's your trouble. You're making acid as fast as you can go. Oh, poor thing. Well, it didn't surprise me where she'd eat. I once saw her eat nine oyster patties, finishing them up at our Ethel's wedding. And hey, Edith, I said, have a bit of mercy on your insides. But of course, they just... Oh. And where are you going? Um, um, into dining room. What for? Uh, well, because um, um, we've uh, got something to talk about. Albert, Albert, quick, into dining room. Now what's come over them? There's something up. Oh, what can be up? They're just acting stupid, that's all. But wait till I get his lordship home. Suppose we went home now. Oh, no fear. That's just what they'd like, back to club. I'd go up to my room now and lock my door if I didn't think I'd be missing something. It's a pity we can't go off just by ourselves. But what for sort a day or two. What sort of game are they going to get up to with us out of way? But I've a good mind to go in there and say to mine, I've been married to you for five and twenty years. And it's about time I had a rest. And for two pins, I'd say to Joe, Joe, if you were to get down on your bended knee and beg me to, I wouldn't stay married to you if I didn't have to. Half done. Well, it hasn't taken you very long. No, but then I'm a rare worker. Many a one said to me, Mrs Northrop, they have said, I can't believe you've just that pair of hands. 
You're a wonder. Well, I don't think I want to wonder here tonight, Mrs. Northrop. I'll pay you what I owe you tonight, and then you needn't come again. I see. That's it, is it? Yes, it is. I don't find you satisfactory. What's she got in that bag? I've got the old boots, the apron, and some cleaning stuff in this bag. I can see two bottles there. So, what if you can? Do you think you're the only folk in Clapper White that can afford something to sort? If you must know, these is two stout empties that I'm taking away with me, because they belong to me. Bought and paid for at Jackson's off licence. No. And if you don't believe me, go and ask him. No, Clara, we don't want any trouble. It's 24 shillings, I owe you, isn't it? It's no, it isn't. It's 25 and 6 if I never speak another word. All right, it's 25 and 6. But I'm going to take something off for the dish you broke. Oh, no, you won't take a damn day me off. That rich now as well as impudence. And it's all you'll get. I won't have it. I won't have it. Well, oh. there it is. And it's all you'll get. What were you saying, Clara? Oh, well, I don't you sit there trying to look like duchesses. I've lived around here too long and I know too much about you. Trying to swank. Why, I remember you as Mariah Fawcett <coughs> and you were number of Burner and Mender at Parkinson's. I thought you took up with Joe Elliwell. And he was number to Wool Sorter in them days. Oh, and as for you, I remember the time when you were weighing out apples and potatoes in your father's greengrocer's shop. Corner Park Road. And a mucky little shop it wearing. Oh, it. fetch my husband! He isn't your husband! I were going to say that I'm as good as you, but fact is, I'm a damn sight better. Get because it. I'm a respectable married woman. And that's all that can be said for the three of you. Get a policeman. Get a policeman. Get a dozen. And they'll all have a good laugh at what I have to tell them. Not one of you rightly married. I heard that... That... Organist. Uh, you know, organist. the organist fella of yours telling your husbands. Oh, if I could call him your husband, I would be eyeing that door. Oh, this lot were too good to miss. I'm better than turn it in fire. Not one of you married. You owe me another five and six. And if you've any sense, you'll make sure I get it. Now, I can't stop no longer, because I promised me husband I'd meet him down at Air and Hounds. We're having draw for a goose for a and white tight and I've got three tickets. <laughs> so, I'll say good night. <laughs> So that's why they were so queer I knew there was something. The dark blockheads. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake, Annie Parker. But I'm not Annie Parker. And it all sounds so silly. Silly? What's silly about it? Serves me <laughs> right for ever bothering with anybody so gormless. Isn't this just her but sob it all over? Couldn't even get us married right. Oh, Clara, Annie, this is awful. What are we going to do? Well, I know what we're not going to do, and that's blame you, Market. Eh, we'll look awfully silly lining up at Lane and Chapel to get married again, won't we? <laughs> Better tell them three daft heads in dining room to come back in no, again. No, just a minute. What for? Because I want to think. A very sight of her, but went, if that mad, I won't be able to. No. If nobody knew but us, it wouldn't matter so much. But that fool of a parson knows. Land organist knows. And your Mrs Northrop knows, don't forget that. And you wouldn't pay her that five and six. Oh yeah, one of them men must fetch her back. I should think so indeed of... God knows where we'll be. We're... Oh. Yorkshire Argus. Oh, I don't want any Yorkshire Argus here. <laughs> well, here we are again. <laughs> These ways I am but... Henry Omanroy, Yorkshire Argus, Mrs. Halliwell? Yes. <laughs> I do. And uh, 
Mrs. Albert Parker and uh, Mrs. Soppet. Three lucky ladies, eh? <laughs> now you'll never guess my trouble. You never guess ours either. Shut up, Annie. Uh, what were you saying, Mr. Roman? Oh, right? I've only gone and lost my camera, you see. I, I know I brought it up here earlier when I came, but then we popped back down the lion, having a bit of a sing song in the tap room. We were doing larboard watch, you know, it's in tenor and bass, beautiful. We did it twice. Anyway, <laughs> when I went back in private bar, I couldn't see photo anywhere. So I, I, I thought I must have left it up here. Any Road, where's the party? This is it. Shut up, Annie. Um, you see, uh, well, you know my husband, uh, Alderman Halliwell. Oh, of yes, course. certainly, certainly. He's quite a public figure these days, isn't he? Yeah. In fact, that's why the Argus told me to come up here, because when he told them that you were celebrating your silver weddings. Oh, he suggested you're coming here, did he? He did, yes. He would. Oh, he didn't know then. Anyway, what? obviously our readers would like to know all about this affair. Oh, I'll bet they would. Yeah, now, Clara, it, it, just it, be mindful. So, what are you two saying? It's all right, Mr. Roman, was it? What Mrs. Halliwell was going to say was that there was just us six. It wasn't a real party. Oh. It was just a, a sort of private sort of. Oh, I know, know. yeah. Co some cosy little do, yeah. With, with perhaps a few drinks. That's it. <laughs> a few drinks and. Uh, and cigars? Mm. Anyway, Mrs. Taylor, wouldn't you like to tell our readers just what your feelings are now that you're celebrating 25 years of happy marriage? Oh, no, don't be shy, oh, Mrs. Taylor. Come along. Um. 20. <laughs> now look what you've done. Nay, no, what have I done? Oh, I only I saw her. Right. She's upset with all the excitement and everything. Oh. It's no use just staying here. you better go and find your camera. Oh, camera, right, yes. I mean, we want no cameras here. What? It's all right, she's upset too. Now you just pop off. Uh, I'll go back down the line, okay? Yeah. Well, rid of him. For how long? You can't just sit there, Clara, saying for how long, as if you're paying me to manage this business. If we want it kept quiet, We'll have to stir ourselves and not sit about shouting and nearly giving it all away, as you and Mariah did when that chap was here. Well, if we hadn't married a set of numbskulls, we wouldn't be in this mess. My poor mother was alive to see this day. Oh, I'm sorry. Annie? Clara? I don't know what happened, but when he asked me that question, something turned over right inside. Next minute, I was crying. Well, crying's not going to get us out of this mess, is it? You're never satisfied, Clara. First you go on at me for laughing, and now you blame poor Mariah for crying. Well, what do you want to go laughing and crying for? What do you think this is, Uncle Tom's cabin? Oh, they're coming in. Who <laughs> <laughs> oh, was that? I said, who oh, was it? Came in just then. Yorkshire Argus. They know. Of course we know. <clears throat> and where do you think you're going? Um, to fetch whiskey. And is whiskey going to help us? I don't know about you, but it'll certainly help me. <laughs> it's not all a tale, is it? No, it's right enough. We put a case to a chap at club. No names, of course. And he said it had happened a few times when a young parson had thought he were qualified to marry folk. Turned out he weren't. Of course, it hasn't happened very often. But it has to happen to us. I blame you for this. Didn't I tell you she would? She? Who's she? The cat? Just you remember you're talking to your own wife. Ah, but you see, he isn't. Not now. Well, now stop that, Albert Parker. Uh, any lady like a drop? Stay time in, he did choke me. Oh, Albert. Mm, thanks, Joe. I think I will. Herbert. Herbert mustn't have any. Herbert. You heard me, Herbert. You're not to have any. Thanks, Joe. Just a drop. Here we are, Herbert. Now then, here. I never would have thought young Falls would have gone back on his word when he promised not to tell a soul to anyone, not to tell a soul. Well, he didn't tell us. Hey, 
Who did then? Charwoman, Mrs Northrop. She oh. heard you behind that door. Where is she? Gone. Mariah's just given her the chop. Well, if she's just gone off with this news, you might just as well play it on Town Hall Chimes. Oh, why didn't you tell me that at first? If this woman gets round with this tale of ours, well, we're, we're done for. Now, did she go home? No, to her and hounds. Oh, mm. Herbert, quick, uh, swallow that whiskey quick and get down to Air and Ounce uh, and bring her back as fast as you can. But I don't know her. Uh, but she was here just half an hour since. And she doesn't know me. Just stop making difficulties and make haste. Oh, uh, come on, Herbert, make haste, bring her back as quick as you can and I promise her how she asked for. Uh, oh, okay, now uh, come on, off you go. Oh and dear. We're dependent upon you, Herbert. Oh, hey, Albert. This all feels quite peculiar to me. What does? This, not being married. Sure, well, well, how can you stand there and say a thing like that? Uh, but, but what, what are you ashamed of yourself? yourself? What are you talking about? After 25 years together, haven't I been a good wife to you? Well, I'm not complaining, am I? You've been the same as a good wife to him, Mariah. The same? I haven't been the same as a good wife. I have been a good wife. Let me tell you, Albert Parker. Nay, Albert. But nay, when you come to think of it, Albert's right, isn't he? Ah, we must face, we must face facts. Now, Mariah, you might feel married to him. I might feel married to him if you'd had twenty-five years of him. You wouldn't talk hey, about him. steady, my steady life. with your twenty-five years of him. Talking about me as if I was like a dose of typhoid fever. I'm not, Joe. All I am saying now is Now let that... me finish what I started to say. I said, you might feel married to him, but the fact is, strictly speaking, and in the eyes of the law, you're not married to him. We're none of us married. Some of the neighbours haven't heard it. Couldn't you shout it louder? I wasn't that loud. You were born in your head, Albert. Yes, you were. I'm surprised you haven't more sense, Albert. You don't know who's listening. All right, all right, all right. But we won't get anywhere until we face facts. It's not our fault. It's our misfortune. I don't know so much about that either. Oh, they're going to blame us now. Yes, and why not? Nay, damn it, how can it be our fault? Well, if a chap asks me to marry him and he takes me to chapel and he stands me in front of Parson, I expect Parson to be a real one and not somebody just dressed up. Well, don't I? Well, you should have found out. Oh, talk sense, love. How would I know he wasn't properly qualified? Well, it's strange. It's got to happen to us, is it? But that's what I say. It's not our fault. It's our misfortune. No use blaming anybody, just couldn't be helped. But the fact remains where... You say that again, Albert Parker. I'll throw something at you. You needn't go on and on about it. Mostly at top of your voice. Say no more. I've finished. But, Joe... What? You're not honestly going to tell me that you feel differently just because of this... Accident. Now, Mariah, I, I can't tell a lie. But uh, ever since I found out we're not married, well, I, I just feel most peculiar. Oh, I could knock your oh. fat head off! Oh, uh. Poor Mariah. Well, I hope you're pleased with yourself now. Never interfere between husband and wife. You just said you weren't husband and wife. <sighs> If I'm going to have an argument with a woman, I might as well have an argument with a woman I've lived with for many a year since. Ha! Well, after all these ructions, another glass of port wouldn't do me any harm. Nice manners we've been, sure. Nice manners, Albert Parker, I must say. Uh, if I were poor Herbert, stop it. I'd think twice before I asked you to marry me again. Ask me again? There'll be no asking. Herbert's my husband and he stays my husband. In the eyes of the law, 
in the eyes of heaven over to me has been married these five and twenty years. And there you're wrong again, because in the eyes of heaven uh, nobody's can, married Can you come in the dining room a minute, Albert? We're uh, having a bit of an argument. Yes, uh, come on, come on. Young soft heads. Mrs. Soffit? Yes? Mrs. Halliwell says we're going to dining room. Yes. The fraction went mad. Nobody here. There's nobody here at all. They'll all be back again soon. They're mostly in dining room. Fraction. What on a festive occasion like this? That's right. Well, it goes to show you what human nature is. Human nature. Well, I, I bet if this had been a funeral, that have all been in here laughing their heads off. Ooh. Not such a thing as a cigar in here, is there? You're looking at them. Do you want one? Here. Ah, oh, excellent. My mother says if God had intended men to smoke, he'd have put chimneys in their heads. But he can tell. <coughs> hey, your mother from me. That if God had wanted men to wear collars, he'd have put collar studs in them of their necks. That's a very nice cigar, this. <laughs> what you bobbing up and down like that for? I'm not bobbing up and down. It's you. You're a bit tiddly, aren't you? Tiddledy? Yeah, squiffy. What an extraordinary day. What is it? I, I think you are the most extraordinary. I don't really know. What's your name? Ruby Bertel. Mm, Ruby. Ruby. All right, I know it's a silly daft name. There's now you can tell me about Ruby I haven't been told already, so don't try. Ruby, I think you're most extraordinary. How old are you? Sixteen. How old are you? Oh, thousands of years. Thousands and thousands of years. You look to me about 70. <laughs> 70? Yeah, I'm 59. <laughs> then you've been neglecting yourself. Too much lifting of the elbow. Do, do, do you read the police news? Oh, yeah, I like it. All horrible murders. Well, you must have seen them pictures of women has been chopped up by their husbands. With bloody hatchets. Well, if you don't take care, Ruby Birtle, you'll grow up to be one of them women. <laughs> ah, don't they look soft? How do you mean, one of them women? Oh, I shouldn't bother about that, Ruby. Got plenty of time yet. Time for what? Now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a flashlight group of the three couples just as they were in that old photograph. Now, let me see. Where's a good play? I think this will Do you mean there's plenty of time things. yet to grow up and then be chopped up? Was I? Uh, yeah, yes, 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 yes. But what would he want to chop me up for? No, no you just sit there. I said, what would he want to chop me up for? Uh, Oh, well, you, you might find one that wouldn't, but you'd have to be lucky. Now, sit in the corner. Mm. That's right, you stay just there, Ruby. Are you going to take my photo? Oh, not for a few years yet. Do you mean you're waiting for me to be chopped up? <laughs> you have a right nasty mind. Oh. Are you married? What's that? Are you married? Y yes. Oh, well, your wife doesn't seem to take much care of you. How do you know? Well, I bet your clothes haven't been brushed for a month. You could almost make a meal off your waistcoat. There's so much egg on it. Why doesn't she tidy you up a bit? Because she's not 
here to do it. Doesn't she live with you? Is it essential that you should know every detail of my private affairs? Oh, go on, you might as well tell me. So where is she? Mrs. Albanroyd is currently helping her sister to run a boarding house known as Palm View. Although the only palm you see there is the one my sister-in-law holds out. Where's that? Blackpool? No, not likely. That's a place you go to live in, not to die in. No, they're at Torquay. Torquay? That's right down south, isn't it? That's right, Ruby. Torquay is on the south coast of Devonshire. Sheltered from the northerly and easterly winds, it lies open to the warm sea breezes from the south, and so is a favourite all-year-round resort of many genteel and refined persons of delicate <laughs> society. In other words, it's a damned miserable hole. So I think we're ready for the three happy couples now. Did you say happy? Yeah, why not? Well, for a start, go listen to four of them in dining room. The thing is, Ruby... Rosie, what's your name again? Ruby. Ru Ruby, I'm sorry, yeah. The thing is, Rosie, there are some things you're still too young to understand. Oh, well, I've heard that before. And nobody ever tells me what it is I'm too young to understand. And for years my brother kept rabbits. It's, it's not a question of rabbits, thank God. No, but marriage. Marriage, it's... It's a very peculiar thing. There are some parts of it I never much cared about myself. Which parts? Well, I'm a man who likes a bit of company, you know. I, I like a, an occasional friendly glass, sis. I admit it, I do like an occasional friendly glass. I think it'd be all the same if you didn't admit it. You and could I, tell. And if these three couples here have been together 25 years and they're still sticking it, I won't listen to you or anybody else saying different. They're the three happy couples. I won't have it. And if you or, or anybody else says to me, drink the health, I say certainly, certainly. I wouldn't dare to refuse because it will be dead against my principles. That's right. <sighs> They're very good health. and storms, side by side, hand in hand, in good times and in bad ones, oh, with always a loving smile. What? Mind you oh, yeah. Always, oh, I've got my hand now. Oh yeah, in, in sickness and in health, in good, rich or poor, in, side by side and hand in hand, all laughs, sunshine and storms. You said that one. Well, yes, but it's, it's a wonderful, it's a beautiful thing. What is? What is? It's like talking to a little crocodile. It's a wonderful, it's a beautiful thing to go through all life's sunshine and storms, always together, always with a loving smile. Hand in hand and side Yes, well, that's what I say. Well, there must be something wrong with me. Because every time I've tried going side by side and hand in hand, even for 20 minutes, I've had more than I want. Extraordinary. What did you say your name was? It's still Ruby Berto. Yeah, well, Ruby, haven't you had a home? Of course I've had a home. Why? You talk as if you've been brought up in a tram shed. No, no sentiment, no tender feeling, no poetry. Oh, go on. I know poetry. We learnt that at school. Oh. They grow in beauty <sighs> side by side. They filled one home with glee. Their graves are severed far and wide by mountain, stream and sea. The same for mother bent at night over each fair sleeping brow. She had each folded flower in sight. Where are those dreamers now? The Indian knows his place of rest. Far. Far in the cedar shade. Oh, I call that most peculiar, most peculiar. I, 
I don't think I'm feeling very well tonight. You're a bit tiddly, aren't you? No, no, I, it just things aren't rightly in their place, but, but I'll get it, I'll get it. What are you doing here? Uh, Ormond Roig, uh, photographer, Yorkshire Argus, take picture, uh, silver wedding group. There's no silver wedding group we taken here tonight. Have I come to wrong house? Yes. Oh, excuse me. Oh dear. What's <gasps> this? I'm sorry, don't worry, I'll, I'll get it right in a minute. Just give me some time. Give me time. Oh. Isn't he the photographer? Yes. And he's drunk. And while I come in, Mariah's servant's reciting poetry. And God knows what's become of Herbert and Albert and that Mrs. Northrop. And I'm, I'm fast losing my patience. I'm fast losing my patience. Oh, no, Clara. Clara, oh, Annie. Clara. I can't knock any sense into Joe. Where's Herbert? Oh, still looking for that Mrs. Northrop. <gasps> Somebody else here now. Well, I didn't ask him to come, whoever it is. Well, if you didn't, I'll bet Joe did with his Yorkshire Argus. Oh, Ruby, who is it? It's a woman. What woman? Well, how do I know what sort of a woman? Who is it? I don't know, but she doesn't look up too much to me. Pain on her face. And I believe her hair's dyed. We don't want that sort of woman here, do we, Maria? Of course we do. Wait a minute, Clara. You'll have to see what she wants, Mariah. It might be something to do with, you know, this business. How can it be? Well, you never know, do you? Well, show her in. State Joe's in. I'd better see her. Good evening. Good evening. Did you want to see me? No, not particularly. I didn't quite get your name. No, you didn't get it because I didn't give it. But I'm Miss Lotta Grady. And I'm Mrs Helliwell. No, if we're all going to be on our dignity, let's get it right. You're not... Mrs. Elliwell, you're Miss Mariah Fawcett. Now, just a minute. <gasps> Miss Clara Gawthorpe, isn't it? Gawthorpe's greengrocer, corner of Park Road. I'm afraid I don't know your maiden name. I'm Mrs. Parker to you. Please yourself. I don't care. I'm broad-minded. I suppose you've been talking to that Mrs. Northrop. Certainly. Met her down at the old Air and Arms where I used to work. She's an old friend of mine. Well, if you've come here to get money out of us... Who said anything about money? Well, you must have some idea in coming to see us. Oh, I didn't come here to see any of you three. Well, who did you come to see, then? A gentleman friend, love. Gentlemen friend? You'll find none of your gentlemen friends in this house. Will she, my wife? I should think not. Wait a minute. I'd like to hear a bit more about this. Very sensible of you. When a gentleman friend gets fond of me and tells me more than once that if he weren't married already, that he'd marry me, then... When I suddenly find that he isn't married already after all, then you can't blame me, can you? If I'd like to know if he's still of the same mind. Oh, go on! I've gone on. Now we are getting to know something. What, Clara? Annie, well, who is it? The Reverend Clement Mercer. Uh, Mrs. Helliwell. Yes. Uh, now, Mrs. Helliwell, although you are not one of my congregation, I want you to realise that I feel it my duty to give you any help I can. I'm afraid I don't understand, no, Mr. Mercer. No, Mrs. Helliwell, don't worry. Let's take everything calmly. 
May I sit down? <clears throat> Did someone ask you to come here? Uh, yes, madam. Uh, a working man I know called Northrop stopped me in the street and told me to go at once to Alderman Halliwell's house as a clergyman's presence was urgently required here. So, here I am entirely at your service. Now, what is it? Do not I hope a really dangerous illness? No. Oh, I hurried because I thought there might be. But perhaps you feel that a younger member of your family is in urgent need of spiritual guidance. An erring son or daughter. No. I beg your pardon? I just said no. There's no erring sons or daughters. Just husbands, that's all. Husbands? You've got it all wrong. D really? I don't see them. I think they want you to marry them. To marry them? Yeah, Mariah, come on, do something. You need to go and talk to Mr. Halliwell. Yes, well, come this way, Mr. Merson. There's no need to come in. Come and see him. If you can do anything for us, that's right. Which one of them was it? I think you missed a chance there. At least two of you did. Two of us? Well, you remember what I told you. I knew him here in Clecklewijk, but it was in Blackpool we really got started. He said he was feeling lonely. And you know what men are when they think they're feeling lonely? Especially at Blackpool. Well, it could have been Herbert. He's never been to Blackpool without me. Yes, he has, Clara. Don't you remember? About four years since. And he said he hadn't a minute away from that conference. I'll never believe another word he says. But your Albert was with him that time. I know he was. So was Joe. He said he needed a change. Well, we all like a change, don't we? <coughs> now, Herbert, stop it. Yes, Clara? Well, Herbert, how are you these days? You haven't forgotten me, have you? I haven't forgotten you. I think there's a mistake. Oh, there's been a mistake, all right. Now, don't be too hard on him, Clara. It was only a bit of fun. What is all this? Now, Herbert. Don't call me Herbert. No, wait till I'm out of way. I expect he didn't mean it. Mean what? Oh, Albert, I found that Mrs. Northrop. Well, hello, Albert. How do you mean, hello, Albert? <gasps> now, now, Albert. Well, might you look at me, Albert Parker? You and your cheap holiday at Blackpool. I only hope you spent more on her than you've ever done on me. I spent more on her? I've never set eyes on her before. Who is she? I don't believe it. I won't believe it. Mayor's motor car's stuck in the front gate. Well, tell it to go away again. Oh, what? What, with a photograph room drunk and a parson that's mad? Lottie! Lottie! Watch, that's the one you is a great song. Do you not know it? This piece of paper, please. I'm not me. interested in your piece What's of paper. What's the I'm going to sell you about that. That's a my friend. So you can't do it. There, don't be sad. Come back here. Well, you see what you've done, oh. Gerald? What? He didn't start it, did he? Because if he did, he's got something to answer for. Uh, did anybody ask for me, Ruby? No. And I bet you could stop her out all night and they'd neither know nor care. But what has been happening, Ruby? The place has been like a madhouse this last half hour. To start with, Mayor Kleckowick's been and gone. <laughs> the Mayor? What do they want to go and bring the Mayor into things oh, for? Nobody brought him. He come of his own accord, with a case of fish things and wear and chain. Like a chap in a panty mine. But he soon took his hook. But reporters didn't. Reporters, eh? Aye, and there were plenty of them and all. And they didn't want to go neither, not like Mayor. So Mr Parker and Mr Elliwell took him into kitchen and gave him bottled ale. And for all I know, they're there yet. But Mrs Elliwell, she's upstairs in bedroom feeling poorly. And Mrs Soppitz with her. The 
that Mr. Soppet and Mrs. Parker are somewhere out in garden. I told you there was somebody there. Oh, but let me finish. Now there's a woman upstairs wash washing herself with dyed air, and nobody knows what she wants beyond a good wash. <laughs> and down in dining room, there's a photographer who's right tiddly trying to argue with Gert Big Parson, and he'll be making a rare mess, so that'll be to do next. Oh, sounds very confused to me. Yes. <laughs> I'd better slip upstairs while nobody else is about. Oh, Gerald. Nancy. Do you still love me? Oh, yes, Nancy. Still, even after a whole hour. Oh, here I say, you two seem very friendly. Yeah. I believe you were the girl he was seen with. Were you? Oh, yes, it's true. We we're practically engaged, you know, only I was frightened to tell anything yet to Uncle Joe. Well, don't start tonight. <laughs> oh, why shouldn't she? He won't be quite so pleased with himself tonight as usual, just as I know another who won't. Good night. Good night. Why don't you go outside and say good night properly? You're only young once. <laughs> yes. You're only young once, Herbert. Do you remember that time, just after you'd first come to Clackawick, when we all went on that choir trip to Barnard Castle? I do, Annie. As a matter of fact, I fancy I was a bit sweet on you then. You fancy you uh, were. I know you were, Herbert Soppet. Do you remember coming back in the wagonette? Aye. Those were the days. Aye. Is that all you can say? Aye. <laughs> no. But I might say too much. I'd risk it for once if I were you. Well, well, what does that mean? Oh, Annie? never you mind. <laughs> but you haven't forgotten the wagonette, have you? Of course I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hello, Clara. <laughs> oh, how long's this been going on? Oh, don't be silly, Clara. What's oh, me that hasn't to be silly, is it? There's you sitting there with my husband's arm <sighs> round you, bold as brass. And that isn't being silly, is it? I wonder what you call that sort of business. It was when... only a bit of fun. And how long have you been having these bits of fun, as you call it, Albert Suppet? You've a nasty mind, Clara. Well, of all the cheek and impudence telling me I've got a nasty mind, you must have been at it some time getting Herbert to behave like that with you. He'd never have thought of it himself. I know him too well. I'm going out into the garden. I want some fresh air. Well, Herbert Suppet, why don't you follow her and go and get some fresh air too? Go on. Don't mind me. Why should Come I? Come here. Why should I? Because I tell you to. I know. I heard you. And who do you think you are, eh? But stop it. You must have gone wrong in your head. Oh, no, not me. I'm all right. You better go home now and leave me to deal with this business here. Certainly not. In my opinion, it's awkward with both of us here. Well, you go home then. What did you say? I said, you go home then. You're doing no good here. Oh, you! Now, you just tell me to go home again. Clara, I always said that no matter what she did, I would never lift a hand to my wife. I should think not indeed. But seeing as you aren't my wife, how about this? Oh, but... Now sit down. Sit down! <laughs> Shut up, woman. I need to think. I don't know what's come over you. Oh, you don't, eh? No, I don't. Well, do you think I put up with women shouting and bawling at me and smacking my face, do you? Well, you've never gone on like this before. Well, yes then, but before you were my wife. I'm your wife now. Oh, no, you are not. Give me that Sit letter. down and shut up, woman. Uh, uh, where's Anna? She's out there somewhere. Why don't you go and look for her? Perhaps she's hiding her face, and if you'd seen what I'd seen... You! Hold your tongue, woman, before it gets you into trouble. Well, I was only trying to... Shut up! 
wait a minute, I'd like to hear a bit more about this. Then you're going to be disappointed. You get back to Mariah Helliwell. Go on. Hey, Clara, you're not you going to... Mind your own business. Go on, Sharp. Herbert, hmm? have you been having a lot to drink? Well, well I, I had a few trying to find that Mrs Northrop. I thought as much. And I may have a few more. But whether I do or not, I'll please myself for once. And if any of you don't like it, you can lump it. Where did you say my wife was? She's out in the garden. What, at this time of night? Aye, and why not? I'll tell her that. I've no need to tell you. You're not my wife. No, and she isn't either. Don't you forget that. Hey, Annie, Annie. Why don't you go and talk to her instead of shouting at her like she's a dog or something? Because standing about at this time of night in damp grass is bad for me. I don't want to start a running cold on top of all this. Hey, Ali, I came here to have a few words in private with well, her. I'll leave you. In my opinion, there's been a lot too much talk altogether among ourselves. Too much noisy, anky-panky about this daft business. You might think we were meeting at gas committee the way we've gone on so far. What's wanted is a few serious words in private between us chaps and our wives and less of this noisy, argy-bargy and anky Oh, there you are. Well, best of luck, Annie. What do you mean? <coughs> anky-panky. <laughs> He's had a drop too much, Herbert has. Comes from running round town after that charwoman. Well, Albert? Well, Annie, I'm just going to set your mind at rest. Thank you, Albert. Yeah, I think you'll admit I've always tried to do my duty as a husband. Yes, Albert. I think you've always tried. What do you mean? Why, well, just what you mean, Albert. Of course, as nobody knows better than you do, I'm in a different position altogether to what I was when I first married you. When you thought you married me, Albert. Well, you know what I mean. In them days, I was just plain young Albert Parker. And now you're Councillor Albert Parker. Well, that's something, isn't it? And it isn't all by long chalk. No, I've gone in business, made money, vice president of cricket league, on hospital committee, and so forth, eh? And, uh, yeah, I've done a lot. You've done very well, Albert. I know I have. Mind you, hasn't altered me much. There's no swank about me. No la di da I'm a plain man. Yes, Albert, you are. Well, what's wrong with it? You're not going to tell me that at your time of life... My time of life? Well, you're no chicken, are you? I say, you're not going to tell me at your time of life you'd like a bit of swank and la di da Wow. I've sometimes wondered... Nah, nah, nah. Nobody knows better than me what you like. And uh, you know what a good husband I've been to, yeah. Steady. Yes, you've been steady all right, Albert. Well, that's what I say. Steady. Reliable. Not silly with my money. No, your worst enemy couldn't say you'd ever been silly with your money. And yet, at the same time, not stingy. No, not stingy. Everything of the best, if it could be managed. Everything of the best, within reason, you know, within reason. Yes, within reason. Always reasonable. And reliable, but at the same time, always moving up in world. Yeah, never satisfied with what to do for most men. No, always moving on and on, up and up. Cashier, manager, sharing business, councillor this year, alderman next, perhaps mayor soon. Aye, that's how it's been. And that's how it'll be. You know, Annie, I sometimes thought, right at first, you didn't realise what you picked out at Lucky Bag. Aye. Well, Albert, what's all this leading up to? 
Oh, oh, well, uh, I, I, I was just saying, I thought I'd been a good husband to you. And, you know, I don't say you've been a bad wife. No, I don't. Thank you, Albert. So I just thought I would set your mind at rest. Now, don't you worry about this wedding business. If there's been a slip-up, well, there's been a slip-up. But I'll see you're all right, Annie. I'll see that we're fixed up quietly and then we'll go and get married again properly. I know my duty as well as next man and I'll see that you're properly married to me. Thank you, Albert. That's all right, Annie, that's all right. I don't say every man would see it as I do, but never mind. I know what my duty is. And what about me? Well, I'm telling you, you'll be all right. How do you know I will? Now, don't be silly, Annie. If I say you'll be all right, you ought to know by this time you will be all right. But I don't think I want to be married to you. What? You see, Albert, after 25 years of it, perhaps I've had enough. Had enough? Yes, had enough. You talk to me about your duty. Well, for 25 years, I've done my duty. I've washed and cooked and cleaned and mended for you. I've scrimped and pinched and saved for you. I've listened for hours and hours and hours to all your dreary talk. I've never had any thanks for it. I've hardly ever had any fun. But I thought I was your wife, and I'd taken you for better or worse, and I ought to put up with you. Put up with me? Yes, put up with you. But what's wrong with me? Well, to begin with, you're very selfish. But then I suppose most men are. You're idiotically conceited. But then again, so are most men. But a lot of men at least are generous. And you're very stingy. And some men are amusing. But except when you're being pompous and showing off, you're not at all amusing. You're just very dull and dreary. Never! Yes, Albert. Very dull and very, very dreary. And stingy. Has somebody put you up to this? No, I thought it for a long time. How long? Nearly 25 years. <laughs> Why? You little serpent! So I feel now, it's time I enjoyed myself a bit. I'd like to have some fun before I'm an old woman. Fun? Fun? What do you mean, fun? Oh, nothing very shocking or terribly... Just getting away from you, for instance. Stop it! Just stop it now! I think, Annie Parker, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, I'm not. Huh? Bit of travel. Liveliness. People that are amusing. And no wool business and town councillors and chapel deacons. Why don't you just dye your hair, paint your face, go on stage and wear tights? I wish I could. Mr Soffit says if you haven't finished yet, you better hurry up or go somewhere else to have it out. Because they're all coming in here. Well, we haven't finished. Yes, we have. Now, dear Annie, let's, 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 just, let's just talk a little bit of sense. Right? They'll all hear you. <sighs> nay, damn it, nay. Hello, Albert. What's made you look so flabbergasted, eh? If I want to look flabbergasted, I'll look flabbergasted without asking your advice, Herbert. Oh, hanky-panky. Now, shut up. Here, Clara, you wouldn't say I was stingy, would you? Well, you've never been famous for getting your hand down, have you? I've got my hand down as well as next man. I've paid my whack, let me tell you. <sighs> Call a chap stingy because he don't make a big show. Because he is a... la di da <laughs> Now stop tormenting him, Annie. <laughs> tormenting me? Nobody will torment me. And I like that coming from you, Herbert, when you've been a byword for years. A byword for what? For years. Yes, but a byword for years for what? Oh, impact. Ask anybody who wears trousers in your house. Albert, don't be so vulgar. Why, a minute since, you wanted to wear tights. Only in a manner of speaking. How can it be in a manner of speaking? You're either wearing tights or you're not. What's this about tights? Now you'll clear out right sharp if you take my tip. 
And I'll bet that is the only kind of tip you do give, too. He looks stingy to me. <laughs> stingy? If anybody else says that to me tonight, they'll get what for, and I don't care who it is. Oh, for two pins I'd either leave this house myself or clear everyone else out. I've never seen such a place. There's folk nattering in every damn corner. Where's Paul Mariah? Clara. <clears throat> Now, Lottie, be reasonable. A bit of devilment's all right, but uh, I know you don't want to make any real mischief. Where's the mischief come in? Didn't you tell me more than once that if you weren't married already... Oh, you now you know very well that were only a bit of fun. When a chap goes on holiday to a place like Blackpool and gets a few drinks inside him, well, uh, he says a lot of damn silly things he doesn't mean. Oh, I see. Just... Telling me the tale and then laughing at me behind me back. No, I don't mean that, Lottie. Nobody admires me more than you do. I do. You're a fine lass and a good sport. But you've got to be reasonable coming here like this when you know as well that as well as I do it was only a bit of fun. No, just a minute, Joe. Well? Oh, Christmas, uh, Mariah. Um, where are you going? I'm going back to me mother's. Your mother's? What if you go to your mother's in this state of mind at this time of night? You'll, you'll give her a stroke. That's right. She must be nearly 90. She's oh. 72 and mind your own business. Here, I've got some of your new business for you. And see how you like it. Well, what do you mean? You know, it'll make a change from carrying on with men behind bar. Oh, what in them are you talking about? I'm talking about her. If she wants my job, she can have it. Oh, now Just listen, Mariah. Minute. Here's all keys and you better see where they fit. And just remember, charwoman's been sacked and I don't expect Ruby will stay, so you'll have to manage by yourself for a bit. And Greengrocer calls at ten and Butcher calls at half past. What does it matter when Butcher comes? I'm talking to her. And here's all the housekeeping books and you better get them right by Friday or he'll be in a rumpus. I Here you are. I don't want her. Of course she doesn't. Well, she'll have to have them. She can't manage the house without them. Ha. You said so yourself. I know I did, but it's now to do with her. Well, what did you come here for, then? And upstairs, oh, and in here, you'll see five pairs of socks and two pairs of woollens that wants darning and you better get started on them tomorrow. And upstairs, there's three shirts and two more pairs of woolens that wants doing. And you better start thinking about tomorrow's dinner, because he's very particular and he always likes something hot. What do you think I am? Oh, now, Mariah, you've got it all wrong. No one knows better than I do what a good wife you've been, but I uh, have a bit of sense, love, and you've made a mistake. And I expect there's a lot of other things you'll have to manage, and while you're managing them, and him too, I'll be in Blackpool. What? No, Mariah, you can't do that. You can't go to Blackpool. What do you think you're doing? No, Mariah, Mariah. Argus. Make a nice picture. Very nice picture. Nice picture. Don't you know? Eh? Haven't they told you? Stop <laughs> <laughs> that, not a day. Have a drink of port. Well, I suppose I might. That's right. Liberty Hall here tonight. Oh, it's Liberty Hall, all right. Chin chin. Oh. <sighs> All the best, Lottie. <laughs> mm. Nice bit of port wine, this. Joe Elliwell does himself very well here, doesn't he? Oh, yes, you'll find it all very comfortable here, Lottie. Here, it, somebody told me he was back at the Talbot. Well, I was up till Christmas. Oh. 
Who told you? Anybody I know? Now, wait a minute. You know him. I know him. We both know him. I just can't remember. I've got him on the tip of my... No, it's no good, but I'll get it, Lottie. I'll get it. Well, then I had to go home. Our Violet, you remember our what? Violet? Oh, yeah, yeah. She married a sergeant in the Duke of Wellington's, the Dirty Thirty Thirds. And now she's in India. <laughs> Tommy Tootill! What about him? Oh, what you asking about him? Oh, I've something better to do than ask about Tommy T. Tootill. Well, quite so, Lottie, but, but what are we talking now about him for? I mean, didn't you say he'd gone to India? No, you fathead, that's our Violet. I remember. It must have been Tommy Tootill that told you I was back at Talbot. Do you see? Yes, I know it was, but... Well, aren't you being a bit argumentative tonight, love? No, <laughs> I'm not. But you've had a couple too many. Nay, no, that's I'm all right. Here, yeah, what happened to your Violet? She married a sergeant and went to India. Oh, I know. Somebody told me that just lately. I told you. Oh, I know you did. I can hear. But somebody else... Tommy Tootill! <laughs> You've got him on the brain. Oh. Well, then at Whitson, I, I went, took a job in Bridlington. Oh, but I only stuck it three weeks. Oh. No life at all. I told him, I said, I don't mind work, but I do like a bit of life. I'm the same, Lottie. Let's have a bit of life, I say. And here we are getting down in dumps just because Tommy Tootle's gone to India. <laughs> he hasn't, you pie can. That's no. our violet. Oh. Nay, Harry, you're giving me the ump. I know. Let's have a bit of song and dance. Why not? Come on. <laughs> just like in the old times. Eh? Ah, you oh. silly old Think devil. One of them. Think. I'm right glad to see you. <laughs> oh, good old times, Lottie, eh? Good old times. Is that a bit fun? <laughs> Yorkshire Argus, want you on telephone. I'll see you later, love. And then get off home. Home. Come on, love, I'll help you. Now, what's wanted now is a few serious words. Yes, I know, Albert, but uh, let a chap have a breather. I've just had to persuade Mariah not to go back to her mother's. Why, what can her mother do? Oh, now, let's not have any questions. More questions, Albert. Let a chap have a breather, will you? Now then. Albert. Joe. Herbert. What is this, an ultimatum? Joe Ellingwell, I just want you to answer one question. Yes, Mariah. Do you love me? Oh, hey, what sort of question's that to a chap here now? Why didn't you ask me upstairs? For once and for all, do you? Or don't you? Of course I do, love. Then why didn't you say so before? And what's wanted now, now that we're by ourselves, is uh, that we put our thinking caps on. Because we're not going to do any good going round the house argy-bargy. That's right, Albert. Yeah, but let me finish, Mariah. We... She's back. <sighs> Who is? That Mrs Northrop. Oh, Jerusalem, we don't want her here. Well, if you don't want me here, oh. why do you send him round chasing after me and asking me to come back up here? Oh, you don't do your own mind. Two minutes together. You haven't settled up with me yet, you know. <coughs> Outside. Hey, well, half a minute, Joe. We can't ever tell her all she knows. We'll be laughing stuck a with her tomorrow. <laughs> You've been that for years, lad. I'd rather have Joe anyone than you. <laughs> Joe's had a little bit of fun in his <laughs> life, but... Boy, <laughs> you, your man's been too stingy. Stingy? If anybody else says that to me tonight, they'll get what for, and I don't care who they are. I said outside, sharp! 
Suits me. Reckon now to this for a party. Oh, you can't frame to enjoy yourselves. But then, there are one or two faces here that would stop a clock, never mind a party. Oh, but just wait till some of those ears that I know's hear about this. Oh, you'll hear them laughing from back of mill all the way up here. We can't let her go in that state of mind. You ought to charge her with stealing. Stealing? Oh, why, for two pins, I'd knock your lying head off, missus. I've never touched a thing in my life that weren't me own. Oh, what is it, love? That photographer's asleep and snoring by telephone. Oh, well, waking him up and telling him to go home. And I could keep him out short if it were worth me while. That's oh. blackmail. Shut up, Clara. Oh, hello. How much do you want? I wouldn't give her a penny. Nor me neither. Can we trust her with no guarantee? We could ask her to sign something. Oh, that'd be silly. Not one single penny. Will you just let me get a word in? Be quiet a minute. Now then. What? I wakened him and told him to go home, but he says he is at home. Oh, what is this? A bloody madhouse? Mr. Hayward, well, Oh, hold that fat is another of them now. Mr. Hayward, I cannot allow you to use such language. It's quite unnecessary. Well, wouldn't you, Edward? Quite unnecessary. A little patience, a little quiet consideration. That's all that is needed. What? We're full like her? Mrs. Northrop, what are you doing here? Making trouble. Making trouble? Oh, you've been drinking again. Oh, but you but a drop or two. Because I was a bit upset. I'm ashamed of you. After all your promises. Oh, Mr. Mercer, you're a wonderful man. And only preaching clever white worth listening to. Ah, he's a fine preacher, is Mr. Cl- uh, Mr. Mercer. Oh, like a gut g- lion of a man. No, Mrs. Northrop. Flattery won't help. Now, you must make me a solemn promise. Yes, Mr. Mayor, sir. Now, promise me solemnly that you will tell nobody what you've heard here tonight. Now, promise me. I, I promise. Uh, wet or oh, dry, uh, may oh. I die? Oh, I suppose that will do. <laughs> now, off you go, quietly home, and be a good yes. woman. Good night, Mrs. Northrop. Oh, good night, Mr. Mercer. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, get, get lion of a man. Worth all of you lot put together. <laughs> well, uh, that's rid of one of them anyway. Uh, now, uh, Mr. Mercer, have you had a chance to study that letter? It's, it's, I've considered it very carefully. And do you know what I think? Well, no, no, come on, men, come on. This letter... In my opinion, uh, yes, is perfectly genuine. Oh, I thought you were going to tell us something we didn't know. What the hangman are we going to do now? And, uh, my dear sir, I don't know. Oh, Christmas. But if you want my final opinion, I think that if there were less bad temper and bad language in this house, you would have a better chance of settling your affairs. Well, I think I'm getting a bit tired of you, Mr. Mercer. What? After wasting my time, uh, you now have the audacity to... You... Uh, Here! Oh, good night, sir. Good night, ladies. Oh, well, good rid of another of them. And now what's wanted is a few serious... Uh, a few serious words about this uh, difficulties we're having. What's wanted is a bit of brain work, and where we're going to get that, I don't know. You'll get it from me if you just give me a minute. Now. What are we talking about? We weren't talking about anything to you. I wouldn't object to nice kind of cards. I like a nice game of solo, don't you? No, and I told you to get off home. Oh, but you want your picture taken. Uh, You'll take no photos here tonight. Now, it's a funny thing you should have said that. Because I'm a man who notices things after being my profession. And I've been telling myself, there's people here in this house tonight as is not 
easy in their minds. No, there's something a bit off here, just you see. And people have to be easy in their minds to be photographed, you know. I mean, there's nobody comes with a toothache to have their photos taken. No, I don't don't suppose they do. It ain't never occurred to me that. <laughs> Name, sir? Uh, Sop it. That's all been right here. Yeah. There's thought in this place. I'd like to do it sometime. Get in a nice sepia finish. Oh, Remind me, oh, Mr. Oh, Soppit. Bloody hell, there you are. Come and join the company. Oh, I thought oh. you'd gone long since. Oh, you know, when you promised to go half an hour since. You ought to set police on her. Oh, Clara. What are you picking on Lottie for? Why can't you live and let live? We're all in the same boat, aren't we? We all come here, and we don't know why. We all go off in our turn, and we don't know where. And if you're a bit better off, be thankful. And if you don't get into trouble and make a fool of yourself, be thankful for that too. Because what I say is this. We're all human, aren't we? We're... Yes. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Roman Oh, What are you thanking him for? Who's he to tell us what we ought to do? Impudence, yeah. I call it. Oh, me. I'm nothing much. But, in case you want to be nasty, Councillor Albert Parker, just remember this, although I may be nothing, happen to work for a newspaper. And behind me stands the press. And the press is a mighty power in the land today. And Telephone went. Oh. And when I says, who is it? Chap said, Yorkshire Argus. Yorkshire. It's Ormondroyd here. And when I said, yes, he's still in, he said, well, tell him he's sacked. You're sacked, I'm sorry. So am I, lass. Oh. I, I left it. I left a bag here somewhere. You must have left it down at Lion oh. Lad. I thought he couldn't carry corn. Oh, shut up, Albert. Oh. Nay, Harry, you silly old devil, it's not so bad. It's not so good, Lottie, love. It's hard to know where to turn. Oh, come on, lad, never say die. We've seen a bit of life and we'll see some more before they throw us on muck heap. For two pins, I'd take him away right now and leave you to settle your troubles on your own, if you can. Why, what's he got to do with our troubles? Plenty. Now, Harry, tell them where you were married. Nay, Lottie, they don't want to hear about my bad luck. No, we've enough of our own without his. Come on, tell them where you were married. Lane End Chapel, 25 years since. Yeah, Albert, he must be in the same boat as the rest of us. <laughs> That's another one of my bits of bad luck. We can understand that all right. Yes, but Harry here was separated from his wife. They wanted to be free. <sighs> they didn't have anything to worry about. They were free. Proper parson didn't have proper qualifications. Hold on a minute. I, Go on, Harry. I, I know he didn't. Wife found that out. But what she'd forgotten until I got a copy of certificate was that in them days, 25 years since, registrar to be there and all at a chapel wedding to sign certificate. Joe, are you right? I know damn well I'm right. I've been carrying this round for months trying to find a loophole. Here, see for yourself. Does that mean we are married after all? <laughs> Yes, yes, of course we are. If Brother Parson didn't tie us up, registrar did all legal writers and punts. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Mr. Roman Roy, thank you. This is the best night's work you have ever done. <laughs> Come on, book up, lad. Why don't you take that little photo shop in Blackpool again? Oh, oh nay, Lottie, I couldn't. It would cost a hundred pound at least to start it again. Oh. And I've not got a hundred shillings. And I know you haven't. No, but there's folks here that would never miss it. Yeah, steady. Oh. 
Albert, it's stingy again. Nay, nay, if that's how you feel. Oh, don't worry, woman, Roy, lad. We'll fix you up, don't you worry. Oh, by gow, you've taken a load off my mind oh. tonight. And right now, everyone should be brightening up and uh, tell you what, we'll have some more drinks. Oh. Drink. Oh. No, babe, no, babe, bring some more drinks. Out you got, and uh, they will give us a song now. Oh, oh Lottie. A bit, Albert. Well, that beats me. I've always seemed to myself an exciting sort of chap. Anyhow, stingy or whatever I am, I am still your husband. So, I suppose that means I'll have to make the best of you. We'll all have to make the best of each other, but then perhaps that's what we're here for. That's right, love. Perhaps we should try and have some of this fun you've been talking about. Now come it doesn't everybody. matter, Albert. Nay, it does. I say we'll have some fun. Oh, hold your breath. Do I look okay now? Come on, Albert. Mariah, Annie, get your hands up. Annie, 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 Oh, I just love to be beside the seaside. 